Calimera. Um, I respect too much because this is more or less 60% of my language uh, abilities in Greek. Um, but anyway, um, first of all, I have to, to thank very much. Uh, Closer, closer. Okay. okay, I have to thank uh, Professor Nervos for the invitation and for giving me this uh, the honor of uh, being the, the key speaker uh, in this conference. Uh, as you see, I'm a transport engineer and somehow I'm also a banker, so you can perhaps think, what, what is this guy doing in this conference? Uh, because I have to admit that the archaeologist in my family is my wife, not me. Uh, but, uh, so, uh, but some kind of interest uh, in uh, cultural heritage uh, uh, arise after more than 30 years of marriage. So, in, so um, the, uh, I'm working for the, for the European Investment Bank since, uh, as I said, 1999. And um, the banks are very, let's say, um, Cartesian people. Bankers are very Cartesian. We, we must know what are we doing, why are we doing, and so on. So I will start with some basic principles that probably you already know, no, sure you know, that, uh, for instance, the preamble of the uh, European Treaty, uh, now the Lisbon Treaty, says that uh, the, the signatures of the, of the treaty take inspiration from the cultural, religious, and humanist heritage in Europe. So this means that cultural heritage is recognized as an important element of the European culture, and we have to, 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 to take care about this. So this is explained. In the, in the second in the second paragraph of, of this. So the bank as an European institution, we have to implement the <coughs> principles and the objectives uh, that are defined by the European um, institutions like the, uh, the Parliament, the Commission and the Council. We always say that we are a policy driven bank. We don't we don't develop uh, policies. We implement <coughs> policies, and in this case, the policies established by the European Union. So, again, trying to, to know what are we speaking about, we have to take, to take some decisions. <coughs> of course, in the, in the, in the field of uh, cultural heritage, the UNESCO is the, 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 the framework that we have to, to refer to. Of course, you know that uh, the, the, these definitions. And what is, I would say, important for us right now is this uh, emerging concept of cultural goods. Because it, the concept adds a new dimension to, let's say, an isolated site. The dimension is integration, which is a principle that uh, we have to apply in all, in all our countries. I will refer to that. Uh, a little later on. But when we go to, to a city, for instance, and we discuss with the authorities about uh, investing in, in, in the city, we always ask them, well, what is your vision? How do you see your city in 20, 50 years? Because if you don't have a city, it doesn't make sense to spend in building a new bridge or a new, a new building. It's necessary to have a vision. And the, the, the cultural groups, in my, in my view, introduced this vision of, of a global uh, approach to, to a, a certain a certain project. You also know that recently, um, Europa Nostra with other research institutes have prepared a very thick and interesting document explaining why cultural heritage is important and makes sense. To, to take into, into consideration. So there are a lot of elements that some of them have already been mentioned and the others you, you already know, that like uh, uh, the, the, the improvement of the attractiveness of, of, of cities and regions, uh, the generation of uh, jobs, <coughs> generation of education, and so on. 
So, this is something that the bankers knew, must knew in order to take to take decisions because international financial institutions like uh, my bank or the, the World Bank, the uh, Independent Bank and so on, we need to, to, to have this basic background and this document uh, <coughs> has been very useful in the recent banks to, to develop our internal, I don't want to say policy, but approach to the to the cultural area. But again, um, banks deal with money, so we need to monetize somehow the, the investments that we are going to, to do. So for this, it's necessary to evaluate the uh, sites, the roots of the area. And here we, we, we are facing as something which is, let's say, very, very important. The fact that not all cultural heritage sites or assets generate revenue. And uh, some of them have a, a very hidden value, like, uh, like uh, the non use value of the, 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 the intrinsic value of just existing, which is something that is, is not possible to be monetized, but it's something that is a characteristic, a basic characteristic of the related sites. So we have to take into account this element, which is something I have to, to admit right now um, for, for bankers, because when we say, well, we are going to finance a new tramway, we know what is a tramway, what are the benefits of the tramway, and so on. But the benefits of preventing uh, the destruction of, of uh, an ancient uh, temple is, is, is very difficult, at least for us. So we need some tools to evaluate, uh, at least from the economic standpoint, the, uh, the reason why we have to finance a certain project. And one the most common tool is the, the cost-benefit analysis. We are very uh, comfortable using cost-benefit tools for evaluation, as I said, a tramway or a motorway or a port or a uh, new power, power station. The, the costs are very clear and the benefits are also quite clear, even some, sometimes there are uh, externalities which are difficult to, 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 to evaluate, like environmental uh, aspects, uh, emissions and so on. But there are tools that, that are very useful and, and very, let's say, standard. And in fact, uh, the, the bank has prepared uh, what we call the guidelines for the economic evaluation of projects. And we cover almost 40 different sectors, from water treatment, uh, power stations, airports, and so on. But we don't have yet a chapter dedicated to cultural areas. For these reasons, because, because we, we are not, let's say, for the time being, very, very expert and very comfortable dealing with this kind of project. And, um, well, uh, this is a very short summary of a book uh, prepared by the World Bank three or four years ago which is called The Value of, uh, of uh, Cultural Heritage, and they identify the cost-benefit analysis as the preferred tool for them to evaluate this kind of project. Although there are some, uh, let's say, small components that can be applied depending on the characteristics of, of, the, of, the, of the site, and also the purpose of the, of the analysis that are somehow summarized in, the, in this table, uh, in, in, in this form. But again, there are some, let's say, qualitative criteria that are not taken by this, by this analysis. And this is not only the case of cultural heritage. In, uh, in the urban context, we face, in many cases, uh, situations like this. And the environmental uh, sector uh, is, also, uh, is also the case. How do you value the a national park? The, the, the protection of, uh, of a bird, uh, a species, is, is, is something that is, it needs other qualitative elements that, that are, cannot be integrated easily in the cost-benefit analysis. And this is why 
the other tool, the multi-criteria analysis, uh, is is also is also important. And uh, recently, we have developed with, together with uh, University College London um, a methodology, a, a new tool dealing with um, multi-criteria analysis, specifically uh, within the urban context. So we have these tools. Now we have we know how to to let's say how to evaluate uh, some projects. Even, as I said, there are a lot of criteria that can be considered uh, of different, of different uh, sources, different natures. Of course, it's, I know it's, it's quite impossible to read this, but you, are not, you know that, that the number of criteria, and here there are six, 50 or 60 criteria, but could be 100. And depending on the nature, the size, the characteristics, uh, one or, or ten of these criteria should be should be considered in the analysis. So this is important to to take a decision to implement <coughs> a certain project. But it's also important for us to to evaluate what is the result of our idea, to what extent the project has been successful. This is what we call the ex post evaluation. When the project is built and is in operation, uh, we we must know to what extent this has been successful. And in the case of, uh, of cultural heritage, there are also some tools. This is one example uh, developed by, by um, um, this um, inherited, inherited uh, NGO that helps uh, at least to qualify from the qualitative standpoint the interest of some, of some uh, sites and film in particular and so on. So this is the, let's say, the general background that uh, we consider uh, in the activities of the bank dealing with uh, cultural projects. So let me explain you a little bit what is the bank. <coughs> and uh, how it works. As I said, the bank is a European institution. The members, the, the, the owners of the bank are the 28 uh, members of, of the European Union and um, the business is, is very simple this is, is, is the typical banking business so this means that so there is somebody that needs money to put in place or to implement a project this money exists exist in the international capital markets. We issue bonds to obtain this money. This means that we are not using any euro from the uh, uh, European taxpayers. I mean, in this sense, we are an independent uh, financial institution. With this money, we, uh, we appraise the project. We analyze the, all the characteristics of, of the project, and then we prepare a proposal to be approved by our board of directors that that is is consisting of representative of the 28 uh, member countries plus the European Union. Even the European Union has a voice but not a vote in the in the in the report. And then we as I said we have sorry we have to evaluate to what extent the project has been successful and in the website of the bank you can find different reports prepared by our uh, ex-post evaluation department dealing with different sectors and, and types of projects. So, so, speaking about money, you can finance a project from different sources. You can obtain money from different sources. The first one, if you are a company or you are a government which uh, is very rich and has money to invest, that's fine. So this is this is a uh, internal funds. Another possibility is to obtain grants, free money. So this is what the European Commission provides through uh, the, um, the different funds related to the cohesion policy of the European Commission. Another possibility is to obtain uh, a loan from a bank. This is our standard, uh, our standard activity. So we give you a loan, and then you can take this loan uh, with a certain uh, uh, interest rate over a very long period of time and so on. So this is the, the standard, banking, standard banking business. 
and depending on the nature of the project uh, and the level of risk, uh, well, uh, we will establish different conditions uh, for our law. And, fin and finally, you have also the possibility of using financial instruments combining not only source uh, money from, from a bank, but also from the private sector, but private investors. Uh, so PPPs, um, uh, funding funds, etc., etc., are instruments that are available in the in the in the market. I guess. So coming back to the bank, we always say that we can offer three products. One is lending, which is a typical uh, loan, as I mentioned before. We can combine our loans with the grants agreed by the European uh, Commission. So it's very typical. Okay. For instance, here in Greece, uh, in the last uh, programming period, 2007 2015, we gave a loan over to the Greek government of 2 billion euro to complement the, uh, the grants received from the structural funds by the European Commission. And we have also. Uh, participated in the implementation of this project. So this part of what we call advising. So we can help, uh, in some cases, promoters to, uh, to implement the project and to be successful. And uh, this is what we call um, advisory services. We can also help in the preparation of the project and the implementation. In particular, this activity uh, in uh, Preparation of projects is very, very important in in uh, in countries outside Europe where uh, they don't have enough capacity sometimes to develop to develop and to prepare a nice project. The loan, uh, the individual loan, is as I said the most standard uh, product. A loan to to build the, uh, the extension of the metro line uh, from somewhere to another one. So. But we have other possibilities. And these are very important. This is what we call framework loan. A framework loan is not an individual loan in terms of a single objective. It's a combination of different components. And this is typical for municipalities and regions. So we don't finance just the budget, the investment budget of, of, of a municipality. We invest in the components that help the municipality or the region in developing what I said before, the view, the, the long-term view of this municipality. And this can combine many different elements, like, for instance, rehabilitation of uh, cultural heritage sites. We have uh, uh, rehabilitated monuments. Uh, we have uh, uh, introduced uh, energy efficiency criteria in public buildings. In uh, in uh, judiciary uh, facilities and so on. So this is this is something that is it's impossible. So, but, but now the challenge is how to consider that one of these cultural heritage uh, asset forms part of this global vision of the city or the or the region. Again, uh, our structural program is, as I said before, just the blending of our loans with. The, uh, the grant given by the Commission. And another possibility that we have is to help uh, SMEs. SMEs, we don't do it directly. I mean, uh, the bank has not the possibility of, uh, of appraising and considering the small projects. For us, a small project is a project with a cost of low, lower, a cost of 25 million. But, but, Again, we can gather different projects within a framework loan or within a structural program loan. And also, in, again, in particular, dealing with seniors, uh, <coughs> we give a big loan to a, to a local bank, and the bank distributes this loan uh, through uh, their, their, their different offices and so on, so, to, to SMEs. So in, this, in, the, in the case of uh, tourism, uh, SMEs are very important. And, uh, and when, when we agree with a certain bank uh, in, in, in a country, um, they have to develop a, 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 a line uh, for supporting SMEs, for instance, dealing with tourism. So this is also uh, a possibility. Again, the, 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 the difficulty for the 
for the promoters is to find which bank is having this this uh, this uh, this line uh, or what the, or to what what are the criteria uh, for for obtaining uh, this uh, the, the loan? But um, but of course uh, you can always ask our our uh, information uh, department, and they would, uh, would, uh, would guide you in, in, in this sense. So dealing with uh, with uh, cohesion policy uh, again. It, it's not sometimes very clear the possibility of financing uh, cultural heritage projects within uh, structural funds. But it's possible. And in fact, I uh, prepared last year a document which is reproduced in, uh, in, the, in this book uh, that identifies these possibilities, what we call the eligibility of uh, projects within the different funds structural funds, cohesion funds, uh, uh, social funds, the agriculture funds. When, when you have a, mo a, a monastery in the middle of, 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 of a uh, county, then this is a rural area. And then it's possible to finance the uh, rehabilitation of a, of a monument like this through the, uh, the uh, agriculture funds. Or in, in the case of, uh, I don't know, um, um, temple in uh, very close to the, to the coast, it's possible to use the maritime fund to finance uh, this kind of projects. So this document is just trying to explain uh, how this is possible. Again, the, the difficulty, the challenge for the promoter is to find the right way and then, as you know, the, all these structural funds are managed by the national and regional authorities and then you have to discuss with them, to approach them in order to, to, to find the way of uh, mobilizing the, the funds. Uh, the bank has created some, time, some years ago an institute. The institute is, let's say, the uh, responsible for implementing the social responsibility of the bank. And um, the institute uh, supports and provides funds for research uh, through different lines. Or, uh, young researchers, uh, uh, postgraduate post researchers can have uh, uh, some, uh, some support for, for one year uh, to develop a doctoral thesis or something like that. And also we finance uh, in, in research institutes dealing with uh, certain uh, aspects uh, that are interesting to the bank. For instance, I can tell you that I'm su uh, supervising from, from the bank uh, research dealing with uh, smart cities in the southern Mediterranean, uh, developed by the University of Madrid, together with other universities uh, in Europe. So, and another activity that the, the institute is, is carrying out is an agreement that was signed, if I'm not wrong, four years ago with uh, Europa Nostra. Uh, through this agreement, uh, the people from the institute uh, appraise projects that have been identified by Europa Nostra. Europa Nostra identifies every year, not in 2015, but uh, in 2015, 2015, 14, and now in 2016, what they call the seven most endangered sites in Europe. So what the Institute does is to, to use the experience of, of people in the bank to appraise projects, and then we prepare a report similar to the report that we prepare in the bank for financing, financing a project, and then we deliver this and we try to also to identify the, the sources of, uh, of uh, funds to, 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 to finance this project. So this is the uh, this reference to the document I mentioned before. That there is in, and these are the, uh, the seven uh, sites that have been identified this year. You will see eight because the, the A1 is the, uh, sorry, the A1 is the, let's say, a recurrent uh, horizontal uh, project, which is the preservation of the Venice Lagoon, uh, which is, as you can imagine, a uh, subject of a big debate between uh, preservation of the lagoon from the uh, ecological <coughs> standpoint and the tourism. So, and the other side, uh, and this one that I mentioned here, you see here uh, the preservation of campus here in Greece, the city of campus, which, is, which has a lot of uh, values. 
and I personally am involved either in this project, which is the uh, rehabilitation of a fortress in, in Tallinn, or this one, which is a mon uh, monastery in, in Spain that was built in the 15th century and is very degraded. So, so, so we will carry out uh, an appraisal of this process, and for this it's, it's interesting to understand the process that we follow in the bank for the um, appraisal of projects. So you, you see that we, we, have, uh, we have to look we have to look at many different aspects, and one is economic, but it's not the only one. We have to look at the environmental impact of the project, the social impact, the financial impact, to, to, what, to, to what extent the project is sustainable from for the financial standpoint. If we give a loan to a certain promoter, we have to be sure that this promoter will retain uh, our loan uh, in 20, 30 uh, years. So there are a lot of elements that have to be obtained, and then, as I said before, we have to wait, obtain the final approval from our board of directors, and then we have to, to follow up the implementation of the project because we have to be sure that our money is properly uh, spent, and then we have to evaluate the project after some, some time. So, we always say that we, we analyze the project from three different standpoints, different three, what we call the three pillars. One is the eligibility, I mentioned and before that the eligibility of cultural heritage projects is, exists uh, in, in Europe and in the bank, we have to look at the technical economic uh, soundness of the project. We, we, we don't like to finance white elephants. And uh, this is the, the, the responsibility of the role of the engineers working in the bank. And finally, we have to look at the financial viability of the project. Always. Uh, Take into consideration that the certain rules in Europe has to be respected and the environmental protection, which is a, a key element uh, in the bank uh, for, for all the projects, following obviously the, uh, the policy of the European Union. So, the conclusion that uh, raising a cultural heritage project is, is, is a little bit uh, not, let's say, extremely clear because, uh, as I said, there are different tools. Uh, there are different kinds of projects, there are a lot of different circumstances, and it is impossible to say, well, for appraising uh, a cultural heritage project, you have to use this code. No. What I'm trying to, 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 to explain in this document that will be the number 41 or 42 of the chapters of the guidelines of the bank uh, appraising projects is to say, well, the circumstances are the, the elements that you have to consider is very varying and uh, depending on the nature and the characteristics of the project you have to use one or another uh, uh, last uh, words uh, well it's important in any project to be very transparent it is important to disclose uh, to disclose what are you doing uh, to the public we are very very uh, let's say uh, heavily scrutinized by different ngos uh, and that would have to be uh, to justify why we are uh, supporting uh, certain projects and then in this uh, complement to complement this it's, it's absolutely important to have a clear dialogue with the different stakeholders uh, because uh, otherwise uh, uh, the, the projects are never successful so the last uh, uh, I can tell you that now the, the, the two big priorities apart from uh, uh, coherence, uh, European coherence, uh, protection of the environment, the uh, fight against the uh, effects of climate change, which are, let's say, the, 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 the horizontal uh, priorities of the plan. Uh, we have now two priorities. Which one is the growth and employment. Probably you have heard about the, the uh, Juncker plan, the so-called Juncker plan, which is, I could speak about hours about the Juncker plan. Uh, uh, but the, the, the basic uh, objective of the Juncker plan is to improve growth and employment in Europe. And also we have now another challenge which is dealing with um, refugees uh, because, as you know, Europe is receiving a lot of refugees from uh, different parts of the world and uh, we are trying also to develop a, a strategy to help refugees grow, uh, developing social housing, developing uh, education facilities, 
uh, health facilities and so on, which is a big challenge also for uh, for different countries in Europe. So now it comes the second system of my Greek language. 